Uh, hi, Fidel here. We're going to show you how to make a Neapolitan pizza dough uh, using the standard ingredients. But uh, today we're going to be doing something different from my other video. We're going to be using a baker's percent and I'm going to be going with a 61% hydration. Basically what that means is that the amount of water in weight is going to be about 60, well, about 60 per, 61% of the total weight of the flour. So if, if you have a kilogram of flour, you're gonna have 610 grams of water, something like that. But uh, we're measuring by pizza, so I want, I want 250 gram dough balls. So I'm gonna need eight of those. And of course, there's gonna be a little residue left over either on my hands or in the mixing bowls themselves. So I'm gonna go uh, just a little bit more than that uh, than what I need. So I'm going to be shooting for 255 gram dough balls and hopefully everything that's left is going to give me a little bit more than a 250 gram dough ball. So roughly that. So the first things uh, you're going to have to get ready is uh, you need some pure sea salt. Uh, I've found that the two types that they sell in Costco are quite good. This one is a uh, uh, pure sea salt fine grain from uh, Brazil. This is a drier one. I also have another one which I use uh, which is this stuff. Uh, this is a Mediterranean sea salt. Uh, this has quite a good flavor as well so uh, I've had pretty good results with both of them. Uh, I also live in the city of Akko and Akko is famous for its sea salt so I can go either way but uh, Akko's sea salt seems to be a little bit moist and uh, I figure if it has a little water, I'm, guess, I'm guessing the weight might be a tiny bit off, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not that critical. But, uh, so we need the sea salt. We're gonna need uh, some instant dry yeast. Well, this is a packet of three grams. Uh, for eight dough balls, um, this is too much. So I'm probably gonna be using less than half of this, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, hopefully it gets evenly distributed. Okay, so you need that. You're going to need some water, uh, a scale, a good metric scale that can go at least up to two kilograms if, if possible because you're going to make me measuring at least uh, a little bit more than a, a kilogram of flour to start off and then you're going to be measuring water and salt and the other things. So uh, we need two big bowls like this. This, this bowl says it's a 4.5 liter bowl so do a metric conversion if you have to but I've got two of these so and I've got one more bowl here a small bowl which is going to be used to kind of protect the yeast uh, in a little bit of flour so we'll get started oh yeah we need a spoon here and uh, we're using a Caputo pizzeria flour which is uh, the zero zero fine very very fine grain so for pretty much the rest of this video, I'm pretty much not going to show my face. Hopefully you can see my work surface. I'll get a little bit more lighting here just to make it easier to see. So well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out our flour. So I'll turn on my scale. And place my bowl on top of it. And we're going to zero that out. Okay, now that it's at zero, we're going to need 1,247 grams of this beautiful flour here. So, let's start with a pretty big mug cup. Start. 1,240. 1,247. Okay. Uh, now, we're going to measure out uh, some water in this. Actually, I'm not going to use that right now. Uh, make sure we're zeroed out. Okay, and we are. We want to use some ice cold water, some really cold water. So, and Aqua City in Japan is quite, quite well known for its excellent water. Uh, we have probably the best water in Japan, and uh, we're going to be using that. So what I'm going to do is, uh, 
pour most of this water, which should be 761 grams. I'm going to go about 700 or so grams first. I'm going to add some ice and stir that around to make sure it gets really cold. Okay, 500, 600, we're almost 700 there. Okay. bit of ice here. That's 728. I want to go to 761. Continue on up to 761. Got a little bit too much so I'm going to spoon a little bit out. There we go, 761. Okay, now there's still four ice cubes in the bowl, as you can see. Now we have to add some salt. So, I'm gonna put that on, zero that out. And for eight dough balls, we're gonna go with 28 grams, 28 grams of sea salt. Yeah, actually, I'm one for sterilizing pretty much everything I use, so. Let's see here. 28 grams of sea salt. It's 23, 25, 26, 28. 28 grams, so we went up to 29, it's close enough. That salty. So we're going to pour the salt directly into the water. Okay. And we're going to dissolve. Okay, that's pretty much dissolved. There's still a tiny little ice cube hanging around. Wait till that melts. Okay, that's going to melt anyway. Let's set that back here. Remember we have our flour here. Actually, I'm going to uh, take a big spoon like this, a spoon about this much of it, into this bowl. Now my yeast packet, like I said, is should be three grams. Turn on the scale. But I don't want three grams, so I'll pour it directly on here. As soon as it registers one, I'm going to take it off. And as luck, luck would have it, I'm not even registering. I'll show you how good my scale is. But I know this is three grams and it's way too much, so it's no problem. I'm going to uh, use this to divide it roughly in half and I'm going to put a little less than half of it into my flour mixture. Okay, That's going to do. Uh, you can probably save the extra yeast uh, but for this video uh, I'm not going to keep this this extra yeast uh, because I, I'm not going to have any real chance to do any baking with it so for probably the next month and we've got plenty of dry yeast so I'll send this by the way. I've got the amount that I need. Let me turn off this scale. So I've got a little bit of flour here. Just a little bit of flour and you can see the yeast there, the, the little darker browner color. So I can give that a nice little mix. Okay. And Uh, this this mixture is just uh, kind of acts like a buffer to protect the uh, yeast from direct contact with the salt. And uh, we're going to set this aside. So we have our, our little bit of flour and yeast here. We have our flour here. And water and salt. That is it for a Neapolitan pizza dough. So we'll get started. We're going to add 
roughly half this into the water. Okay, as you can see. Just to get it started. It's about half. And gently cut it in. Don't want to overwork it. Because I don't mean overwork it. What I mean is you don't want to work too fast with it. You'll splash flour all over the place, splash water, and uh, you'll end up stuck with something that is not as close to 61% hydration as you'd like. So, okay, so we've kind of worked it into a bit of a paste here. Okay. okay. Now, of course, yeah, we know this is salt and water, but. We didn't want to put the yeast directly into the salt water itself. So now we're going to add the mixture that had the yeast in the flour. And at this point, because we only added half of the, the whole flour mixture, this particular mixture should well distribute the yeast. And uh, this is just a pasty mixture. The key is get this one mixed up well enough, and you shouldn't have any distribution of yeast problems, even with such small amounts. Now, I know a guy on the pizza making forums, he goes uh, probably way lower than this uh, with his yeast, so I think he's he deals with uh, having to dissolve his yeast in water. So, but uh, if you want to go that route, with even less yeast, uh, that's fine. But I, I find typically for a 72 hour rise, and then in my case, I, I ball on the morning or the afternoon of when I plan to make pizza, usually several hours before making the, the pizzas themselves. So I think by that time, uh, I will have pushed out some of the air and allowed it to kind of Regas just a little bit at room temperature, so it should, shouldn't uh, cause a problem. Okay, so we've kind of worked this in quite well. As you can see, it's still kind of a pasty, pasty mixture here. Okay, about this point, we're going to add almost all of the remaining flour. I'm going to save about that much really like just a handful of flour. I'm going to save that and that's basically for cleaning off my instruments at the end, cleaning off the bowl and, and uh, this allows me to not lose very much product at all. So uh, now that I've got this in, we're going to continue to fold this in. Again, very gently and slowly because you don't want to knock the flour out of the bowl. You can start after cutting in some of it, you can start folding in the extra, which I told you is for, that's the job it's supposed to do, is for cleaning. And uh, we're going to clean our spoon, so we're not losing any product so far. Take another pinch for the other side. So now our spoons should be nearly squeaky clean. Okay, now it's a pretty clean spoon. Now about now, I'm going to just take a little bit on my hands, the flour, and it's now time to start using my hands and working this dough. And you can see I'm kind of folding in everything that I can. There are several techniques you can use, but at the beginning you just want to form the ball. Pull it into itself and make a fold. Pull it into itself, push in, and then every once in a while I go back around, back around the bowl and remove all the excess. And uh, every once in a while, I clean my hands. But it's still nowhere near how smooth we want the ball to be. 
this close. For this stage, anyway. We're going to get it way smoother later. Okay, now, take the rest of this flour, pour it over. And now, all the flour is in. We shouldn't have any trouble with losing product now because we formed a pretty good ball. And we've dusted the bowl, and that will eventually get itself worked in. So now we're going to go around and fold it into itself, push it into the center, fold it into itself, push it into the center. So as you can see, we're folding it into itself, pushing down in the center. Again, just in case anything's still sticking, we'll get it. Now what we're going to do is, as the dough starts to get harder and harder to work with, we're going we're gonna to let it rest for about, uh, no more than about six to eight minutes. And what this is going to do is a allow the moisture to kind of distribute itself into the dough ball pretty evenly. Okay, now uh, a lot of people might tell you, you you should probably cover it with a damp towel. You can do that, but I think uh, right now we're only working with about six to eight minutes. It's not really going to dry out that much, so instead of a damp towel, for, you can see you see the texture on that. It's uh, far from smooth yet, but uh, it will be much smoother after we work it again. Okay, so okay, I'm going to leave that in the, in the bowl. Okay, I'll leave that in the bowl, and we are going to cover it with just a. Almost fits snugly on there. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside for about six to eight minutes and we'll come back and continue to work that. Okay, it's been about seven minutes. Now we're gonna we're gonna start with this kind of lumpy looking thing and uh, we're gonna start smoothing it out. Uh, my, I think my daughter is gonna be waking up from her nap, so you'll probably hear a little bit of noise as I go on, but uh, Anyway, the pizza dough must go on, so here we go. So you'll notice the uh, texture will start to look a lot smoother than it did before, just by that little bit of rest. And after just a few kneads, I'll show it to you again. You can see it's, it looks completely different. texture, it's uh, extra smooth, much smoother. I mean, there's still a ways to go, but uh, much smoother. So, continue to work it a little bit more. It's developing the gluten. And when it gets a little stiff, we're going to let it rest a little bit, and we're going to do it again. So, we'll do this about two more times, and uh, it doesn't really need to be needed for like six, eight, ten minutes or anything uh, because the glutens are going to develop quite naturally on their own uh, over the course of uh, three days in the refrigerator and then uh, uh, several hours relaxing and uh, before, before uh, being baked. So basically you get it to something about that smooth, about that smooth and about that texture. Do that about three or four times more. If you're going to be baking it, uh, you know, the next day, three or four times it. I'm just going to do this about two more times, get it smooth again, and then I'm going to put it in a container and uh, save it for Saturday. By the way, today's Wednesday.
Okay, so uh, I'm going to give this, uh, this bill ball one last kind of need. Uh, what a lot of guys like to do is uh, give it a nice stretch right here, and then a fold, right? And then a stretch. Not the greatest, but uh, I'm gonna fold. Okay, now I'm just gonna work this back into a ball. Just get it right back into a nice shape, a smooth shape. Okay. Now we've lost very little product. You can see how clean the bowl is. Nothing lost. I probably don't need to compensate for losing stuff, but if you're using an electric mixer, like a KitchenAid or something like that, you're probably inevitably going to lose a little bit on the edges. Uh, I, I didn't even lose much on my hands. Um, so, got a nice smooth ball. You can see the texture there. That's, uh, that's kind of what you finally want to end up with, something like that. So, uh, uh, next, it's going to spend three days, a full 72 hours, in the refrigerator. So what I get right here is a, a five liter container. Got this at a Japanese dollar store, well, it's a 100 yen store. So. Uh, five liter container and uh, I'm going to light, very, very extremely lightly brush the corners, the edge and the bottom with a very little, tiny, tiny amount of olive oil. Now I'm not going to brush my dough. I don't want olive oil in the dough. Uh, probably this microscopic amount is not going to really matter, but uh, that's just the way I am. So this guy is now going to go gently in here. Push it out, push it down the sides here. Okay. The top of the container goes on. Now, over the course of the next couple of days, I will check on this, and uh, I will notice that sometimes because gas is being released, CO2, sometimes the top might pop open. Uh, just uh, quickly put it right back on, it should be fine. But really, uh, for using a very small, small amount of yeast, uh, you're not going to get you're not going to get a dough ball. It's you know, too much bigger than what it is already. If you end up with double size, uh, that's probably about maximum. I'm hoping, and I usually hope for very, very tiny bubbles. Uh, right now, you don't see any bubbles on the bottom, really. But uh, after uh, 72 hours in the refrigerator, this should be roughly about one and a half times its size from its current size, and that's pretty much fine. If it's a uh, maybe 1.7, 1.8 uh, times the size it is now, its original size, that's perfectly fine too. I mean, uh, it's, it also depends on the weather, humidity, things like that. Uh, I'm just not that picky. Um, I'm just not that picky about uh, having, you know, everything in the perfect temperatures and perfect everything. Uh, I think a lot of home bakers really couldn't be bothered with uh, full-on temperature controlling and things like that, but um, what the refrigerator does do for me is it does eliminate the winter-summer factor on my, my, initial, my initial rise, so uh, letting this thing ferment in the refrigerator in the winter as opposed to summer, there's no difference because my refrigerator is the same temperature. Uh, but, I, but what I do is if it's in the summer or in the hot, hotter seasons, 
I will uh, leave my dough in the refrigerator a little longer on, on the day that I'm baking and take it out a little bit later and, and ball it a little bit later, later because uh, I'm going to need that extra time uh, you know, during, during any given party. Uh, what happens if you take it out too soon, you ball it too soon, and if it's sitting out at room temperature in warm or in warmer room temperatures, uh, I don't know if there's such a thing, uh, your, your ball will start to rise even more and, uh, and will probably get way too soft for you to work with. So it's probably, so you're kind of looking for that sweet spot where you take out the dough, you ball it, and you use it at the, at the time when it's nice and soft, it's gentle, you, you know, you can gently work with it uh, without overstretching it or you know damaging it or anything like that yet it's still it's not going to fall apart on you so you're looking for that sweet spot and that maybe can take some some practice but uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this dough ball out at maybe 1 p.m no 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 probably about lunchtime about 12 o'clock and i'm going to let it rest for probably an hour and a half to two hours I'll ball it, and then probably four hours after that, uh, and it could be three hours after that. Um, I'll start, I'll start uh, actually baking it in my wood-fired oven. Uh, but for now, that's that's it uh, for this dough making uh, part two. Will be the actual uh, uh, making of a pizza to see how this particular dough turns out. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for watching.